Hello everyone, welcome to this Princess Christmas get together. I thought we'd have a little update on one or two things that have gone on through the year. Um, I had an email from the Gloucestershire Warwickshire Railway a couple of weeks ago because I'm a donator to the uh, uh, Stanway Viaduct Fund. Um, uh, they updated the the site as well, so they've stripped off, they've taken up the track, st uh, stripped out all the ballast, only to find um, a structural issue at the base of part of one of the parapet walls, uh, which involves um, cracked brickwork, etc. Well, obviously that's got to be put right before the track's put back down. Um, that's got a knock-on effect, of course, because that's bumped up the cost of that particular phase of the repair and uh, it'll put back uh, the reopening of the line between Toddington and Broadway. So that's not desperately good news, but um, they found it now, which is good. Um, so it won't uh, go into hiding and cost a lot more at a future date. So they'll fix that up and then uh, complete phase one. And then sometime probably in March, I expect the uh, the line will uh, reopen to Broadway. Um, phase two, which is the uh, repair of all the uh, brickwork on the actual vert itself. Um, I don't know when that's going to start. It's about one and a half million pounds worth of uh, cost. So uh, we'll keep up. We'll keep up to date on that one. Um, the most recent video, uh, Stolen the World Station, Bought on the Water Station, I've had no update from Paul Morris as yet as to the uh, progress of the uh, possible op opening of the line from Kingham to Bourne as a recreational trail. Um, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. And uh, that leads me nicely on to the, to the video that I'm going to put up before Christmas. Um, those of you who've been following progress will have seen um, the High Walls part one video uh, when we explored from the Fossway um, at Bourton on the Water up um, going to the west towards Andover Sword uh, where we found that uh, rather splendid structure um, carrying the River Windrush um, under a huge embankment on the railway and also that little occupation bridge um, where the uh, which allowed the farmer to drive his sheep from higher pastures down under the railway down towards the river Windrush the meadows down the water meadows um, I had actually followed on from that although the videos didn't follow on with it um, just give me a sec put that back up um, there is a uh, high walls part two which um, I'm going to put up now and uh, there is a high walls part three and uh, if you remember from the part one that huge embankment um, they required to get get the railway over the river Windrush well as we move farther up to the west towards Andover sort of Cheltenham um, those large embankments change and they become rather deep cuttings so there's some quite spectacular scenery on the next couple of videos. Um, I'll pull up the map now of uh, the route for part two. Um, you can see Aston Farm on the top right of the picture. The bottom centre is Windrush Farm. That's where I lived in the 70s and early 80s, 1980s. Um, the parking along there is practically non-existent. You can see the little car motif there. Um, about 200 yards to the west of Windrush Farm there's a quite a nasty bend um, and there's a lay-by there that used to be the road the, the bend used to be a lot sharper so I've legged it down the, the side of that particular field found a, a, an old access that I remembered onto the track bed but we're walking back towards Borton on the Water not away from Borton on the Water we're walking back towards Aston Farm um, that's quite an interesting walk. That's uh, some nice scenery down there and one or two very interesting uh, items to look at. Um, if you look near the top of the picture on the right, just below Aston Farm, there's a red X. Um, only recently, 
whilst going over Google Earth with a magnifying glass, I found an accommodation bridge just there. Um, I don't know what it was what it was for. I'll put up this next map, which is a which is a, a closer look at that particular area. Um, I can't find any evidence of a footpath. Um, the original road that went under the accommodation bridge that uh, disappeared. That was there in the early 1880s. Um, so if you look at the dotted, the, the dotted line that forks off of that road, that was, a, that was a farm track in the 1880s. And the hatch line that runs down to the bridge was just a hedge. So what that was there for, I don't know whether it was just purely access from the farm into that particular field. I can't imagine it was. So that's a bit of a mystery, but there is a bridge there. Um, but it's buried um, and I believe, although I haven't seen it, all that remains is the two parapet walls and of course the track that runs across it is completely buried. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I don't know what's going on there. Um, what I've also found out since I filmed this particular uh, section is Aston Farm, one of the buildings on Aston Farm uh, was an actual fact a corn mill. It was on, on the side of the River Windrush. You can see River Windrush um, written on top of the picture up in the top right hand corner. So there was a corn mill there and in amongst all that woodland halfway along the top of the picture a lot of that wouldn't have been there. That's all or a lot of it's conifer. Conifer woodland probably planted I don't know between the two wars. Um, but somewhere along that line, through those trees where the River Windrush runs, were extensive uh, watercress beds. And uh, as you'll see from the video where we're walking down that line, um, there is another accommodation bridge, um, which looks little more than um, a pedestrian access or perhaps a horse and cart. Whether that was linked to those watercress beds, access to those watercress beds, I don't know. Indeed, I couldn't rem actually remember that bridge until I saw it. Um, and I seem to remember, this is going back probably in the late 70s. I'm sure that bridge was intact. There was an arch over it, I'm sure there was. It might have been partly demolished, but of course most of it's gone now. So that's that's of interest, that's, that's part two. Um, Part three um, was meant to be um, just a look at uh, Knockgrove Railway Station or the remains of Knockgrove Railway Station. That was the highest uh, railway station on the on the uh, Banbury and Channel Direct Railway, 750 metres above sea level. So I thought, well, we'll, we'll carry on towards Andover, so we'll have a look at that. Um, unfortunately, um, things didn't quite work out the way I planned. And it was probably with the second, with good fortune that I got Plan B. So uh, there was a bit of a hike towards Salperton, which is behind uh, Knockgrove Station, and heads towards um, Andover's Ford. There was a bit of a hike up there, and there's uh, one or two very interesting things along there. I'd never been along there before. And by the looks of it, not many people have either since it closed down. So that's the plan. Uh, I'll pull up part A just before Christmas and uh, part B probably just early in the new year. So um, we've got all three parts up and then uh, there's some more uh, rather interesting things coming in the pipeline in the new year. Um, so all it remains for me to do is uh, Wish you all a happy Christmas and uh, I don't know whether it's going to be a white one, we'll have to wait and see. First thing I'm going to tell you is I last walked this line in 1982 and uh, what I'm going to do this time 
because of uh, various factors, one being parking, another being the uh, track is actually blocked off about another 400 yards up there. So I thought we'd start at this accommodation bridge. And you see down there, there's a track heading into the uh, embankment at 90 degrees. So if I can get back down on the track the way I used to, we're going to have a look at the accommodation bridge first and then uh, work our way down the uh, line, this time towards Aston Farm. Um, and we're going to find the terrain. This side of the farm is a lot more rugged than it was um, the other side. So we'll look at the accommodation bridge first um, and then we'll have a little wander down the track. And there's one or two things I remember from uh, my last visit in 1982 that will hopefully still be there. So bridge first and then we'll walk on. Okay, I've managed to get uh, down off the uh, railway track and I'm just walking down to this accommodation bridge down in this dip. You're really starting to see the autumn colours now in the trees and the bushes. Lovely morning for a walk. Now just go a little bit further down into this dip. The colours on that sycamore tree. Wow. It's actually fairly well buried in there. You can probably just make it out. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. There we are, that's better. Got to it. Little engineering brick then, as per usual. Quite a nice bridge actually. There's the uh, buttress wall up there. And the abutment with that nice uh, little motif on the end. Same on the other side. And you can't see the abutment there, it's buried under that lot. Ooh, not looking quite so good on the inside. Oh dear, oh well. There's a wooden post in there. I don't know what that's for. Yeah, looking a little bit the worse for wear in places. And again there, quite a bit of stone. I would imagine that's either, well, common, probably a combination of water and frost is getting into that stone. Engineering bricks fine though. That's all standing up well. Another abutment on the end. Difficult to see. And uh, that side's not faring quite so well. That's starting to fall to bits down on the abutment side. It's not looking very good at all. 
Oh, well, there we are. That's the equipment. That's the bridge. That's a cool bridge, actually. way back into the uh, railway line. And uh, we're just coming off the embankment now, um, over to our right, and it still carries on on the left, hence the barbed wire fence. Um, coming out of the sun into the shade, more trees. Um, just thinking back to when I last walked this site, um, how much it's changed. Back in 1982, obviously the, the, uh, the line hadn't been closed that long and it was all grass, wildflowers and a few very small sapling trees compared to what it is now. Nature's really taken over. Just going to shut up for a minute and let the music, let some music uh, take over and enjoy the scenery. Somewhere here is the point where I used to access the track and somewhere down here, if my memory serves me correctly, there's a plate layers hut. Is it still there? We should find out very shortly. still there minus its roof but it's still there well I never you can see the construction Oop. sleepers upright red brick fireplace That some sort of uh, bench bench seat or thing along the back there. Well, some of it survived. I never. Pleased to find that. And I look at the back. You can see the chimney. Looks a bit sooty. Maybe they put some sort of paint or something on it. And. Uh, There's the gable end and the little window. Yeah, the roof's definitely seen better days, but that wasn't, uh, that was inch board, inch by eight inch or inch by 10 inch board. Excellent, pleased to find that. And now we're entering the uh, Really big cut, the really big cutting. This would have been all bare, of course, in 1982. You can see the stone up there. Look at that lot. And wouldn't you know it, the ever present Great Western Railway Hearts Tongue Ferns. And you have to have, have to ask how on earth they got here because 40 years ago, in the summer this place was an absolute sun trap it got really really hot so where they've come from 
in anybody's guess that they're here. Same on that side. Huge pieces of limestone. have had fun cutting this lot out. Explosive I fancy. And then it becomes more open. And you can start to see the extent of the limestone beds up there. All solid rock. trees and bushes and brambles that have certainly taken over from the grass and uh, wildflowers and butterflies. goes on and on. That gives you some idea of what it looked like 40 years ago when it was just grass, wildflowers and butterflies. And another bare spot, exactly what it looked like uh, in 1982. And you'll have to wonder why nothing's established on that particular section of the bank. Maybe it's just uh, gets full sun and it's too hot. I don't know. There's a mystery that one. Still heading in the direction of the Aston Farm, of course. And still the train is uh, 
pretty rugged. Oh, massive limestone blocks up there. And that little larch tree's growing in the middle there. I have no idea. Must be some soil up there somewhere. get quite chilly in the shade these morning these early mornings nice and warm in the sunshine but temperature drops quite significantly when you get in the shade and it looks like the uh, cutting starting to peter out a little bit on that side not so on this side Still a long way up there. And uh, I've forgotten all about this one. Another bridge. Accommodation bridge with traffic, farm traffic going over the top of the railway. Completely forgotten about this. In fact, I'm sure it had a top on 40 years ago. I could be wrong. There's the rest of it. That doesn't look very safe at all. There you go, another bridge. Right, we'll carry on a little further. But at some point this um, cutting tapers out quite rapidly. I guess we're probably around a quarter to a half a mile from Aston Farm. Um, we've just about lost the embankment on both sides. And uh, through the trees. There you go. That's a mature stand of European larch in there. On this side, ash trees and blackthorn. So I think we'll terminate this one. I'm going to say we're getting pretty close to Aston Farm now. And uh, I think we've exhausted the interesting items. So, uh, 
We'll turn around and head back. And see if we've missed anything. Have another view up the line. Looking towards uh, Notgrove Station. Um, the old plate layers hut hanging on for dear life in the foreground. It's been a really nice walk. This is the exit point back onto the uh, main A436 with the cars parked. So the landscape, you can see the, uh, the uh, stand of um, mature European larch. That's um, a railway line in front of it. And then you follow the line. Comes up across there. and then disappears in the direction of the old Knock Grove station. About another four miles up the, uh, up the line. And another view of the line. Travelling up the valley, beyond this field. disappears from view and that's where I lived for about 15 years 1970 to 1985-ish um, Wintrish Farm, that's Wintrish Farm Cottages, I lived at number one and it was a very convenient about 10 minute walk down onto the old railway line and I used to do that uh, most Sundays if the weather was suitable I've uh, moved about another mile and a half up from uh, where we ended our uh, walk and um, this is the Lower Harford Road, oh, sorry the Lower Harford Road Bridge, um, same railway obviously, I can't get down in there because um, I've asked permission to have a look at it but th this is um, big pheasant shoot country and they get a little bit upset if you start wandering around at this time of year. So that's the bridge, fairly magnificent structure. Um, I'll see if I can get across the other side and have a look at that. But yeah, that's um, quite a splendid bridge. There's another view of it. Very good condition, this one. Um, pretty magnificent bridge considering it's on a little uh, single track road down to a farm but yeah really pleased with that one a uh, broad gauge strut and a straining post so that's the fence line railway fence line it's a bit sleeper there carries on down through the trees as you can see Here's the bridge from the road then. Pretty wide bridge. Well, and it's a pretty wide cutting as well. Don't know if I can get to the other side, I will try. But there's a lot more trees and a, a cut on the other side. This side is a lot to deeper. Let's see what we've got here. We've got a public footpath. And we've also got a wall. Look up a bit further. And that wall carries on up there. Let's have a look over. No, it's 
going to be difficult to see that this side of the uh, bridge I'll go back and have a look the other side and that's about the best I can do I'm afraid that's the face of the bridge uh, looking in a westerly direction I'm going to have to try and get back to this one at some point next year when it's drier and they're not so sensitive about the pheasants there you go very nice bridge Lower Harford Road and if you collect bridge numbers that's the one for you rather windy today that's a view back down the road towards Lower Harford Farm down the dip it's quite a deep ford down there for anybody planning a, planning a trip with their low uh, slung sports car not advisable and this was the Aylworth Road Bridge I remember walking across it in uh, about 1975 the next time I went to walk across it it had gone and that must be probably 83 84 disappeared quite quickly um, well, there you have it <laughs>